We all have certain assumptions about the technology we use, but these assumptions can turn out to be misconceptions or myths. In today's video, let's take a look at some common misconceptions or myths about technology. Hey guys, Ash here and welcome to another FTJ video. FTJ is new and needs your love, so go on, ring that damn bell. Myth number one has to do with the cameras on our phones. Given the recent megapixel boom, a second coming of the megapixel race if I might, I'm gonna take the time to tell you more megapixels do not make for a better sensor. Not always. The image quality that a camera produces is dependent on a number of factors. First there's the sensor size, then the pixel size, then the image processing itself. And it's not just that, there's a bunch of other stuff too that makes a smartphone camera or any camera good. Megapixel counts just stuck around as the metric to quantify camera quality because it was the easiest to market, easiest one to convey to the consumers. More megapixels do equal sharper images, so consumers could understand that. But here's the thing, in order for you to see a significant improvement in image quality, you need to have a four times increase in megapixel count. So say you have a five megapixel sensor, you need to move to a 20 megapixel sensor to see a significant change in the image quality, which is why brands are now pushing 48 megapixels because 48 is 4 times 12, 12 being one of the most common camera specs on smartphones these days. So when you're on the lookout for a great camera, keep in mind a 48 megapixel sensor isn't always better than a 12 megapixel sensor. Next up, we have the internet speeds. Now you might have noticed that even though you subscribe to say a 50 Mbps connection, your download speeds are around 6 Mbps. Now this is because to you a MB might be a megabyte, but internet providers advertise in megabits per second. Both of them have the same MB acronym, the difference is a megabyte equals 8 megabits. So you'll generally get one eighth of the speed that you see on paper, at least for downloads. So how do you differentiate between the two? Well, megabyte is all caps MB and a megabit has a lowercase b making it M lowercase b. This is a sneaky little thing that ISPs do and they've been doing it since well the beginning of time. There is nothing you can do about it but if, if you ever wondered why your internet speed isn't as advertised, well this is why. Now this is what we call an old wife's tale. We've heard our parents say it a thousand times, never take a magnet near your TV or computers, I mean if you do you'll end up killing them. Now there is some truth to these, CRT monitors used to be susceptible to this and computer hard drives can still die if you expose them to magnets. But these days we've got LCDs everywhere and you need really really big magnets if you want to fry your hard drives. The small magnets that come on kids toys and stuff cannot actually damage your electronics. So saying that taking magnets near your electronics can kill them is a pretty blanket statement. It's almost like saying avoid drinking water because water can drown you. Now how many of you guys use the RAM cleaner apps on your phones? Do you use them on a regular basis? Well doing that might actually be counterintuitive to your phone's performance. Now clearing RAM used to make sense in the Froyo and Gingerbread days of Android. Back then the RAM on phones used to fill up real fast but these days you don't need to clear all the apps from memory. Killing apps and loading them up again only consumes more battery and unused RAM is wasted RAM. Android's RAM management automatically eliminates apps from memory when it senses a more intense app being loaded meaning it can automatically prioritize what apps to keep in memory and what not to. Constantly eliminating apps from memory is just counterintuitive. So we would suggest you kill an app only when it seems to be bugging out and save clearing all apps to when the system becomes unresponsive or buggy. Finally, we're going to talk about charging your phone. Everyone seems to have an opinion on how to charge your phone's batteries. Some say you need to charge your batteries only when it drops down to 0%. People also say that charging your phone overnight isn't advisable because overcharging can kill your battery. Now both of these have truths to them. Older lithium cadmium batteries needed to be charged only after hitting 0% because of their inconsistent battery memory. And overcharging used to kill batteries too. But these days with lithium ion batteries, it's not the same. Our phones know when to cut power to the battery, so overcharging isn't relevant either. So yes, you can charge your phones overnight and letting lithium ion batteries drain down actually reduces the amount of charge that they can hold. So it is in fact not advised to let a lithium ion battery drain below 10% if you want to prolong the life of your battery. Now these are some of the common misconceptions and myths in tech. How many of these did you already know? Should we make a part with few more of these? Do let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't yet and ring the bell please. Till next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching FTJ by C4 Retech and I'll catch you on the next one.
Tchau.